The two most important words I heard from you there were mind and heart. And if you read that book right there next to Reverend Pitts, you're going to read about mind and heart in that book. I just finished reading that book this morning at 8 o'clock. I started a year ago, but I had a knee operation and I had a couple of days to devote to it and I just got back to it. And it's, it'll tell you all about who Barack Obama really is. I made some notes here. Thanks for having me. As you know, I spent a long time with the FBI. Yeah. How's that? There you go. I sure. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah, we hear you. Is that a lot better? Yeah, we can hear you now. Oh, well, you can hear me now. Well, I spent a long time with the FBI, as most of you know. 33 years in total. 26 of them, can you hear me? My wife looks disconcerned back there. <laughs> Kathy, can you hear me? Okay, good. Anyway, my travels took me to Miami, Florida, to Pittsburgh, to Boston, to Washington, D.C. And thankfully, I spent 26 and a half of those years here in Wheeling, where I met my wife, Kathy Oliver. And uh, hey. how about Kathy? Hey, hey, hey. And uh, we raised our three children. And I'm originally from a small town in Massachusetts. Very small town, 6,000 people. And my dad, I was very proud of him. He was a lieutenant commander, World War II in the Navy. But he was the first Catholic to be elected as selectman in that town. What's the town? What town? Lancaster, Massachusetts. It's not, it's not near Cambridge. It's about uh, 40 miles from where you were up in Cambridge. But anyway, he was the first Catholic to be elected in that town. The town was founded in 1653. He was elected in 1953. So it took 300 years for a Catholic to be elected. If you talk about bigotry and prejudice, I saw it as a young kid coming up. It wasn't against race in those days. It was against religion in that little town. Well, I was also fortunate shortly thereafter uh, to see him working for Senator Kennedy. And he helped Senator Kennedy get, in, get elected in 1960. And uh, I was very proud of that, uh, proud of the fact that he helped with the election. But as a young man, I traveled to Washington, D.C. <clears throat> and three years after that election, I had the opportunity to file by President Kennedy's coffin when it was laying in state. And that Americanism swelled up in me when I saw that. Um, it was unbelievable. I also attended his funeral at the Arlington National Cemetery. And not long after that, I also stood on the seventh floor of the Department of Justice building and saw Martin Luther King Jr. walk within three feet of me on his way in to see J. Edgar Hoover, the then time director of the FBI. And as we all know, <clears throat> those two did not get along. Fast forward to this week, and I've made some notes because I didn't want to miss anything here. We have a young biracial candidate trying to become the next president of the United States. When Kennedy was running, they said he was too young, he was too inexperienced, and he was the wrong religion. And where does that fit in with what we're doing here today? It's basically the same thing. People are telling us that this young senator from Illinois, Barack Obama, is not ready for prime time politics. Or recently point to the fact that he attended a church where apparently his minister, who was doing well for many, many, many years, all of a sudden didn't do so well and I want to point out to you, whatever church you go to, I'm sure you've seen some preachers and ministers in your church that you have fallen out of love with for whatever reason, some of the actions on their behalf. Whatever their crime might have been, and some of them are crimes committed by these pastors, priests, and clergy members, I believe that Reverend Wright has probably suffered, suffered a little bit of a mental problem late in life. That's how I read Reverend Wright. After having been involved in the field of law enforcement since the age of 22, I think I've got a pretty good read on people. 
I think I can tell the people that are sincere that are genuine. And I see Barack Obama as a genuine American. We've been very much embarrassed by the actions of our last two presidents. Uh, very much embarrassed, not only at home here, but at a, abroad, among the nations that like us, and among the nations that don't like us. However, I do see a person in Barack Obama that I think this country needs right now. And I don't think that the other candidates are going to be able to stand up to what he can stand up for. I just don't believe it. The other people, they're the ones that have the baggage. I believe Obama projects himself as a person who will be able to admit to a mistake when one is made. When was the last time you heard President Bush admit that he made a mistake? Never. I've never heard him. I've looked at him, I've watched him, I've read about him. I look at the values that he considers the values of love and charity and grace. And there's one more, humility. I truly consider him to be the guy for our times. The guy for our times. In our history that we're at the crossroads of our country. I mean, they've been saying that since our country was formed back in the 1700s. Every 10 or 12 years we're at a new crossroads. Well, I think we're at another crossroads right now. I think this guy is going to be able to take us through the next eight years and take us through it well. All right. Now I've got some notes here because I don't want to miss this. I trust that he will show this country that he has the ability to create effective compromise among our political parties, all three, and will develop economic policies and programs through the intelligent selection of key people in his government. That's the key. Look at some of the people we've had up there. Just ask a senior citizen or Bishop Pitts if they're happy with the way things are going on right now in this country. Not at all. And Bishop Pitts is going to shake his head. Neither am I happy with it. Our youth are clamoring for a new leader as a role model by somebody who's not an athlete. talked about the last two presidents. They're not going to go down in history as individuals that our population is going to hold up as role models or moral leaders. I think Obama's going to do that. Yes. Yes. I'm going to close by saying uh, Kathy and I attended a gathering this week to celebrate our National Day of, of Prayer. And one of the pastors talked about the, today's society not getting involved, not getting involved with uh, uh, intellectual tone of indifference has crept into our life yes. uh, to the social to the political to the in yes. intellectual to the religious yep. to the economic uh, uh, er uh, parts of our society we must change this attitude of indifference and I suggest we reach out for this young man Barack who I believe is attempting to become the leader of our country for all the right reasons yeah. the yeah. right reasons Rebecca mentioned hearts and minds, and we didn't conspire with our little talk, did we? Senator Obama has been quoted as saying in this book right here, next to Reverend Pitts, quote, you have to have a change in government policy, but also a change in our hearts and minds. Yes. Let's yes. use the hearts yes. and minds. Yes. Let's use our hearts and minds and go out there on May 13th and get this very important person elected and we'll see him on the wharf in September or October. Thanks for having me.